Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. One of the nice things about Star Wars The Old Republic is that you can try out the game as a free-to-play player without investing any money into the game, and play all 8 class stories from levels 1 to 50. Unfortunately, in return for the ability to play for free, free-to-play players are penalized with restrictions in-game. This video is specifically for free-to-play players and I'll be going over tips on how to mitigate the effects of the free-to-play restrictions. Before I dig into the tips, I will say I highly recommend subscribing for at least one month to Star Wars The Old Republic if you enjoy the game. This is because if you sub for one month, you permanently unlock all the current and past expansions and the ability to reach level 70, even if you unsubscribe the next month. The following tips are specifically for those who are unable or uninterested in subscribing. Free-to-play players only have a limited amount of story quests available to them. They basically have all the quests and storylines that were released with the launch of the game, but they don't have access to the expansion storylines. While you play your class storyline from levels 1 to 50, you'll have the exact same amount of quests available as a subscriber would. The main quests in the game are the ones with a purple triangle. These are your class quests and your main planetary arc quests. These quests progress your main story in the game and are the ones you really want to try and complete. After you finish the purple quest on your final planet of Ilum, you'll no longer be able to progress your main story unless you subscribe, but there are quests available to you if you're interested. If you really enjoy doing every quest in the game, there's actually many additional quests available on the planets while you work on your class storyline, for example on Dromikos or Coruscant. These additional quests are called exploratory quests and are hidden by default. To turn them on, open your map with the M key and check the checkbox that says Show Exploration Missions. This will allow you to see all yellow exploratory missions both on your map and in the open world. You can choose to do these quests while you level, since this makes the most sense in your story's timeline, or you can choose to go back and do them at level 50 if you've run out of quests to do. In addition to these exploratory quests, each planet also has heroic quests, and most of which are repeatable once per day. Heroic quests have a yellow triangle symbol that looks like it's making a loop, which means it's repeatable. Due to the amount of heroics available, heroics might be something fun to do once you've run out of quests as a free-to-play player. Not to mention, they're one of the easiest way to make credits. When the game was first launched, level 50 players had multiple repeatable daily areas. Since then, many of the level 50 daily areas were converted to a one-time exploratory mission, but if you're looking for more quests to do, there is one level 50 daily area called the Black Hole. This area is accessible from a shuttle near where you land in Corellia and is meant to be played after Ilum. If you mostly play by yourself, you have the option of playing and repeating the soloable flashpoints available in the game. These flashpoints were originally designed for groups of four people, but now have a single player option available. If you miss them while doing your class quest, I highly recommend going back and doing them afterwards. These soloable flashpoints include the Esselus for Republic players and the Black Talon for Imperial players very early on on the fleet at level 7 or higher. There's Terrell 5 and Maelstrom Prison for Republic players only, also on the fleet at level 29 or higher, and their Imperial counterparts, Boarding Party and the Foundry. A little later on at level 45 or higher, there's Directive 7, which can also be started on the fleet. And lastly, for both factions, the Battle of Ilum and the False Emperor at level 47 or higher on Ilum wrap up the initial storyline. If you are willing to try group content, even free-to-play players have access to many of the group flashpoints in the game. Keep in mind though, you will likely not be able to use the gear dropped in the flashpoints, as it requires artifact authorization to wear. Personally, I think the flashpoints are worth trying at least once, even if you don't get any good rewards from them. As a free-to-play player, they're pretty cool. The easiest way to find a group for these is to hop into the group finder. Once you've completed your class story, many players recommend creating a new character of a different class. Free-to-play players can have 4 characters on each server, and with 5 servers that means you can have a total of 20 different characters, more than enough to try each of the 8 classes out and even try them again a second time as a different gender or by switching your alignment from dark side to light side or the other way around. If you're looking to start your second character, I recommend picking one on the opposite faction, Republic, Imperial, 
so you can see an entirely new set of quests on your second character. As a free-to-play player, you may want to visit the achievement section of your legacy panel. There are all kinds of achievements available, some for exploring all the maps in the game, others for hunting down all the datacrons or lore objects in the game. Because these achievements were placed in the game before the expansions were launched, you may be able to complete many of them as a free-to-play player. If you're willing to try out player versus player group content, free-to-play players are limited to 5 PvP matches per week, but if you have a friend who is subscribed, you can queue up with them and run unlimited war zones as long as they are queuing up with you. If you enjoy space player versus player, even free-to-play players can run unlimited starfighter matches starting at level 1. And if you enjoy solo space missions, you can play up to 3 per week from your ship. If you've completed every quest available to free-to-play players and don't want to create a new character, this is the point where you're really going to want to either try out a different free-to-play MMO or subscribe to SOTOR. It will cost you about $15 USD to subscribe for one month, which will unlock all the current and past expansions and will permanently allow you to play the expansion stories even after you unsubscribe. One of the biggest restrictions free-to-play players face are the credit restrictions in Star Wars The Old Republic. Free-to-play players are limited to only being able to hold a maximum of 200,000 credits, and credits they earn over that amount go into an escrow and won't become available until they subscribe. In my free-to-play playthrough, I reached this limit pretty fast at around level 30 on my third planet, and most players will reach this 200,000 credit cap by level 50, especially since credits come faster at higher levels. Unfortunately, this means you'll only ever be able to buy something that costs a maximum of 200,000 credits. A large majority of cosmetic armors, mounts, pets, and decorations on the GTN are going to be out of reach for free-to-play players. My first tip is to get familiar with sorting the GTN, the Galactic Trade Network, where you can buy things from other players, by price. Although most cosmetic items are quite expensive, there are quite a few that will be under the credit cap. First, search in the category you're looking for in the GTN, then press the tiny arrows on the top right to sort by price. Then you'll easily be able to see which items are available for you to purchase. If you also don't want to be tempted by overly expensive items, you can limit your search to 200,000 credits. Personally, I like leaving the limit open-ended so I can see things that are slightly out of my range, which may go down in price later in the week. You can only hold 200,000 credits on your character as a free-to-play player, but you can hold unlimited credits in your legacy bank. Every time you get close to reaching your credit cap, place your credits in your legacy bank. That way, you can withdraw up to 200,000 credits from your legacy bank when you need them. If you don't have a legacy bank yet, you need to be level 15 and get yourself a stronghold. You can start the quest in the strongholds and crew skills section of the fleet. If you've managed to save up quite a few credits in your legacy bank, maybe from doing heroics or selling items, and if you can find a trustworthy seller, you can make a deal with them to purchase a more expensive item. They can place multiple junk items on the GTN for amounts under 200,000 credits. For example, if you want to buy a 1 million credit item from them, you could instead purchase 5 junk items for 200,000 credits each from them, and they could then send you the item through the mail. This requires a lot of trust on both sides, as it's possible to scam on both ends. The seller could never send a valuable item after their junk items are bought, or the buyer could demand the valuable item first and never buy the junk items. So only make this kind of trade with a trusted seller or friend. Due to the possibility of scams and the extra work involved, don't be surprised if a seller declines this type of trade when you mail them about it. If you have a trusted friend who is subscribed, you can have them place some junk items on the GTN for under 200,000 credits that you can buy to give them the credits, and then they could buy the things on the GTN on your behalf. This is nice because then you can buy things on the GTN even if the seller isn't interested in making a GTN trade. Just keep in mind that your friend has the ability to run away with your credits and never buy the valuable items, so only do this with someone you really, really trust. Due to the free-to-play credit cap, it can be hard to buy good-looking armor for your characters. One place to pick up some cheap fashion is from the Adaptive Fender on the Fleet, located in the Supply section. You can buy armor pieces for as little as 2,500 credits from this vendor. Another option for inexpensive, good-looking gear might be crafted armor. Even if you can't craft it yourself, you can ask in general chat if anyone is willing to craft you a full set for a couple hundred thousand credits. 
as all synth weavers in Armor Mix have access to some cool schematics, even if they don't have any of the special schematics unlocked. Don't forget, you can also wear low-level or weak armor found on the ground or bought from the GTN without compromising your stats if you use the outfit designer to make an outfit with it. If you play with friends often, you also have the option of wearing social gear, a type of gear that can only be earned if you do quests with other players. You can also get mounts on a budget. The mounts vendor in the Galactic Trade Market section of the fleet has mounts for as low as 8,000 credits, and there are 5 mounts within the free-to-play credits limits. If your passion for fashion extends all the way to strongholds, most cartel market decorations will be outside of your 200,000 credit cap. But there are many decorations that can be earned from other sources. For example, with the new Group Finder panel, you can earn some unique decorations by running solo flashpoints, even on a free-to-play account. Many crafted decorations also cost less than 100,000 credits. The trick is to buy their correct prefab that you can then use to turn in for the decoration, instead of buying the decoration directly from the GTN. Cartel coins are normally earned by subscribing or can be purchased with real money. However, there are some ways to get cartel coins for free. These cartel coins can then be used to buy unlocks that will improve your quality of life in the game as a free-to-play player or to buy cosmetic items. The first and easiest way to get free cartel coins is by using a security key. If you have a smartphone or tablet, you can earn 100 free cartel coins per month if you add a security key to your account. This also makes your account safer from being logged into by someone who isn't you. The second way to earn free cartel coins is through achievements. Some of the achievements are extremely easy, like finishing the first act of a class story. Achievements are a great way to earn cartel coins if you only need somewhere between 20 and 60 coins more, but I wouldn't recommend doing them to try and earn thousands of cartel coins, as some are difficult or tedious. Some of the free-to-play restrictions can be removed with unlocks, while others are permanent. Here's the unlocks I recommend saving up for. They can be bought either from the GTN with credits or from the cartel market with your free cartel coins. Keep in mind, if you want to buy from the GTN, the availability might be low or the cost might be outside of your 200,000 credit cap, especially with inflation. Preferred players receive many of these unlocks permanently for free if they have ever subscribed or purchased cartel coins in the past. So keep this in mind if you're considering buying cartel coins to purchase these unlocks. It might be more worth it just to subscribe for a month. If you are a brand new player and haven't even made an account yet, you can use my or a friend's referral code to get a free jumpstart bundle that has a free inventory unlock in it. Unfortunately, this does not work if you've already made an account. Preferred players actually have a really nice perk. If they use a referral code, they'll actually get seven days of free subscription, but it doesn't work for free to play players. The first unlock I recommend getting is additional quick bars. Without them, you'll be limited to two quick bars worth of abilities at a time, which can really hamper your combat. At low levels, this is not an issue. At high levels, this can really restrict the amount of abilities you can use. Exactly how many you will need will be up to your playstyle. For example, on my free-to-play character at level 30-ish, I've already had to decide whether I wanted to have my speeder or another combat ability on the bar because I'd run out of space for both of them. Without a green-colored personal character bank, you'll have no place to store bound items except for your inventory. If you enjoy playing space fashion, you will want to get access to the green personal bank to store your bound items in. The unlock you want to purchase to get access to that is called the Unlock Cargo Hold Access. On top of unlocking the personal cargo hold, the higher your level, the more items you'll own. Purchasing more inventory space or legacy or personal bank tabs can really help you hold all of it. The Unify Colors Unlock allows you to match most armors to the color of your chest piece. This is nice if you have a green boots, a red chest piece, and orange pants. If you don't want to buy this unlock, you can just carefully coordinate your outfits so they match without requiring the color match option. If you're often wearing a helmet and want to see your character's face in cutscenes, you'll want to get the hide head slot unlock as well. There's also one more unlock you might want to get. Rocket Boost is not a restriction, but it is an awesome unlock that allows you to use a temporary pair of rocket boots to fly around at high speed, even indoors. Rocket Boost is probably the most recommended unlock in the entire game. 
There are also some unlocks you can buy with credits from your legacy panel that you might want to save up for. Under character perks in the legacy panel, these perks apply only to your individual character. The first one I recommend is the basic field repair droid for 50,000 credits at legacy level 5 so you can sell stuff and repair your gear on the fly. The other one I recommend is a field mail droid which also costs 50,000 credits for legacy level 10 and allows you to access mail wherever you are. The last one that I really recommend is field respec which costs exactly 200,000 credits and allows you to change combat proficiencies on the fly at legacy level 10. There are a lot of other really useful unlocks, but they aren't accessible until later legacy levels or are very expensive and free to play players likely won't be able to unlock them due to the credit cap. Gearing up as a free to play player is pretty tough, but there's very little content in the game you'll need great gear for. Players who want to gear up as free to play players do it mostly for fun and personal prestige. There are no free to play solo missions that require good gear, 8 man operations are not available to free to play players, and both flashpoints and player versus player war zones offer a bolster to undergeared players. Players who want to gear up for solo content will actually want to focus on their favorite companion and make them stronger by raising their influence level. To raise your companion's influence level, you should bring them along for cutscenes, make decisions they approve of, and give them gifts that they like. Gifts can only be bought from vendors on the fleet, gathered from crew skills, and bought from other players on the GTN. If you can get your companion's influence level to level 50, they'll be extremely strong and may even do more damage or healing than you can. I've included a link to a chart about which companions like which type of gifts in the description of this video. Players will have a rough time actually gearing up their character as a free-to-play player at level 50 due to two reasons. First, gearing in the game is now focused at the new higher max level, which is no longer 50. And two, the best gear in the game requires artifact authorization, which free-to-play players do not have unlocked. Gear in Star Wars The Old Republic is made up of multiple smaller pieces that give it stats, armorings, mods, enhancements, hilts, and barrels. Once you have a moddable piece of gear, you can then control, right click it, and drag your modifications into it to make it stronger. Pieces of moddable gear can be bought in the supply section of the fleet. Free to play players can get a hold of one of the best crystals available in the game for your lightsaber or blaster and for your offhand. There are many types of crystals available even to low level characters on the GTN that are originally crafted or from the cartel market. On the GTN, search for item modifications, color crystal with a cost range of 1 to 200,000, then sort by price, lowest to highest. Unfortunately, there's no way to filter out the weaker crystals and crystals that require artifact authorization. What you're looking for is a plus 41 crystal that's lit up with the stats you want. It took me until about page 30 to find one and until page 50 until I found a color I liked for about 50,000 credits. You could also try sorting prices highest to lowest. There's likely to be more usable crystals in the more expensive range. Level 50 free to play players on a budget will want to pick up green bordered modifications from the level 48 vendor that have the number 25 in their title and an item rating of 122 to replace any lower end pieces they've picked up while leveling. These only cost 1,500 credits each. This is the easiest way to get caught up to level 50 gear. Free to play players also have access to the blue bordered modifications on the GTN that give a boost over their green bordered counterparts. On the GTN, search for item modifications and then choose barrel, hilt, armoring, mod, or enhancement depending on what you need at the moment. And make sure to limit your search from levels 40 to 50 and price from 1 credit to 200,000 credits. The blue modifications you see in the search should be the ones you are able to wear, but they can get pricey fast. For example, at the time of making this video, a blue hilt cost only 9,000 credits, but a single armoring cost 95,000 credits and you would need 7 of them to fully fill out your gear pieces. Ouch! Availability on the GTN is also sometimes limited if you need to buy more than one or two. So if you don't have many credits, stick to the inexpensive green mods from the vendor. Augmenting your gear is a way of making it even stronger. You must buy or craft an augment kit then apply it to your moddable armor, then buy or craft an augment to place into your new augment slot. 
Free-to-play players stuck at level 50 will be looking for level 50 augments with a blue border for the best augments available to them. On the GTN, search for the words augment space number 25 and limit the price to 200,000 credits. The blue bordered augments you find should be the ones you can wear. These augments require an augmentation kit MK6 or higher, which can be found on the GTN by searching for an augmentation kit and sorting by price. At the time of making this video, MK7 kits were actually cheaper and more available than 6s, so don't be afraid to buy a higher level kit if it's cheaper. There is also a tier slightly higher that requires MK-7 kits and has the words Augment Space 26 in the title, but the availability of these on the GTN was very low. So get these if you can find them, and then get the Augment 25 augments for the rest of your gear. You will need a total of 14 augments if you want to augment every single piece of your gear. Augment kits can only be used once per piece of gear, but the augments themselves can be pulled out and placed in different pieces of gear. If you have a crafty friend, you may have better luck getting them to craft you a full set of augment kits and augments for a lower price than on the GTN. But since you can't trade with them, it would either have to be a gift or use the complicated methods of transferring credits via the GTN mentioned earlier. And there you have it! Every tip and trick I know about how to survive as a free-to-play player in Star Wars The Old Republic. I hope you have fun learning how to work around the restrictions of being free-to-play. And as always, may the free-to-play be with you. If you enjoyed this video and want to show your support for this series, or want to have similar videos show up on your YouTube homepage, make sure to subscribe. And if you're looking for more tips about Star Wars The Old Republic, you'll definitely want to watch my other video, Tips for New Players.